Our story begins at a magic academy where a boy named Alto is a genius at every subject, aside for summoning. A teacher tells him that he must summon and form a contract with a familiar or else he won't be able to graduate. Desperate, he visits the library to look for information on something to summon. Suddenly, an old, dusty book falls on his head. He thinks to himself how coincidental it would be if this was a book about summoning, and when he takes it home, he realizes that that's exactly what it is. By using the book, Alto is able to summon the sun, or at least something equally as hot. A beautiful demon appears before him and introduces herself as Vermail. She says she's been trapped in the book for a very long time and thanks him for freeing her. Alto then says that he wants her to be his familiar, much to her surprise. Magic quickly fills the room and both Vermail and Alto are marked by a magical seal, making their new bond permanent. Vermail then kisses her new master and drains him of some of his mana. Afterwards, she says that from now on, she will gladly serve him and tells him that she'll do anything he wants. But he must be a complete idiot because his only request is for her to put on some clothes. But to be fair, he probably just can't think straight with no blood left in his brain. Once dressed, Vermeil explains to Alto that in order to sustain her physical form, she'll need to occasionally drain Alto of some of his mana by kissing. She also explains that Alto's mana is incredibly powerful, which is why no other creature wanted to form a contract with him. Because most humans hate demons, they decide that it would be best to pretend as though Vermeil is a human woman, so she uses magic to hide her demonic features. Alto takes her to school the next day, where his professor tells him that he can't have a human as a familiar, but a closer look at her chest reveals the mark that bonds the two. The professor has no choice but to give Alto a passing grade. While in class, Vermeil acts clingy and teases Alto a lot, which embarrasses him greatly. Meanwhile, Lilia, Alto's childhood friend, watches this unfold and gets incredibly jealous. So after class, she challenges Alto to a duel. If he loses, he's not allowed to bring Vermeil to school anymore, but if Lilia loses, she'll have to do any one thing that Alto says. Lilia gets excited by this and begins to touch her body at the thought of what naughty things Alto might make her do if she loses. The fight begins, and Lilia summons her wind familiar, before launching a tornado attack at Alto and his demon Milf, but Vermeil effortlessly blocks her attack. The duel is being broadcast to the whole school with the use of magical screens, and yet Alto clearly has the best view. With a menacing demeanor, Vermeil says that it's now her turn to attack, but she just uses magic to make Lilia become so aroused that she surrenders. Even though she lost, Lilia is still excited at the idea of doing anything Alto wants, but he just tells her that he wants her to become friends with his familiar. Both girls agree, even though they clearly don't like each other. Afterwards, Alto and Vermeil head back home, where Vermeil explains that she's been weakened a lot by being trapped in the book for so long, and she'll need to regularly keep draining his mana in order to regain her full strength. She tells him that there's a much more efficient way to drain his mana, but he says that he'd rather just stick to kissing. The next day, Vermeil finds herself attracting a lot of unwanted attention on her and her master, which makes Alto a little bit infamous around school. Later that day, Alto is confronted by Rex, an upperclassman of his and a member of the Dragon Riders Club, which is basically just a club for people who have dragons as familiars. Rex challenges Alto and Vermeil to a duel, because Vermeil flicked his little brother's dragon in the head and sent it flying away earlier that day. Rex says that if they don't want to fight, he's willing to accept an apology from them, in exchange for some quality alone time with Vermeil. Alto refuses, and stands in front of Vermeil to protect her, which surprises her. Rex summons his gigantic dinosaur familiar, and sends it charging towards Alto, but Vermeil supercharges Alto's mana, allowing him to defeat them with his crystal magic. After losing, Rex is surprisingly humble and says that Alto and Vermeil won fair and square. He apologizes for harassing them and goes on his way. Back at home, Alto reveals to Vermeil that he someday wants to become one of the world's most exceptional mages, and she says that she'll support him in that endeavor and promises to make his dreams come true. The next day, they run into their friends Marx and Cheryl. Marx embraces Alto and congratulates him on his victory against an upperclassman, and says that he's glad to have Alto as a rival. The three best students in their grade are then called to the headmaster's office to decide who among them will be the next class representative. It turns out that Marx is actually an idiot, and and his maid Cheryl is the smart one. Dumbledore tells them that whoever can retrieve a rare flower from the enchanted forest before 6 p.m. will become class representative. As they race towards the flower, Marx is knocked out by a man-eating plant, forcing Cheryl to tend to him while the others continue on. The path to the flower is blocked by a three-headed dog, so Lilia drinks an invisibility potion. But it doesn't hide her clothes, so she has no choice but to strip in front of Alto, which embarrasses her even though he can't see her. While Lilia goes on ahead, Vermeil pins Alto down, unbuttons his shirt for some reason, and drains his mana behind the bushes. Now, I'm not sure what happens next because all my blood left my brain. 
but Vermeil knocks out the beast with a powerful spell while Lilia uses that opportunity to grab the rare flower. When Lilia returns, she hands the flower over to Alto because he's the one that really deserves it. At that moment, the potion wears off and Lilia becomes visible again. In her embarrassment, she drops the flower and it blows away and lands right at Cheryl's feet. She picks up the flower just as the bell rings to signify the end of the trial. Cheryl is declared victorious and becomes the next class representative. She doesn't feel as though she's earned it, but Lilia and Alto reassure her that she won fair and square, but that next time they won't go down so easily. In the next episode, it's revealed that the student council members are the most powerful mages at school, and that even the professors can't oppose them, which I think is true in pretty much every anime anyways. One of these powerful mages is Chris, the leader of the Dragon Riders Club. She beats up Rex for losing to an underclassman and for having a dinosaur as a familiar rather than a dragon. She has Rex's blood on her shoe from having kicked him and tells Rex to lick it clean and that if he does, maybe she'll let him stay in the Dragon Riders Club. He tells her to F off and she beats him so badly that she sends him to the school infirmary. Alto, Vermeil and Lilia soon show up to see how he's doing. But Rex tells them not to worry about him and that it's not their fault that this happened. Angered, Alto challenges Chris to a duel. As the fight begins, Chris calls upon her mighty dragon. Meanwhile, Alto kisses Vermeil in front of all the spectators, including Lilia, to channel as much power as possible. While they kiss, Chris notices golden mana surrounding them, and Chris's reaction implies that it's something rare and perhaps powerful. As they fight, Chris is impressed by Alto's power, but what really impresses her is how Alto's supposedly human familiar is somehow able to block all her fireballs. Chris flies into the sky on the back of her dragon, and rains down fireballs on the duo, while shouting about how dragons are the most powerful creatures in existence, and only the most powerful mages can form a contract with them. Compared to her, everyone else is a weak little insect that she looks down upon from high up in the sky. Meanwhile, Vermeil supercharges his mana once more. Chris is shocked to see that Alto is still able to channel mana after having used so much already throughout the fight. Chris shoots one more fireball down towards the demon and her master, while Alto summons a gigantic crystal pillar. While both spells fly towards one another, the duo leaps up to Chris and Alto holds a crystal shift to her throat, forcing her to surrender and ultimately winning the duel. Due to his victory, Alto becomes very popular with the ladies at his school, which makes his childhood friend even more jealous. But Professor Obsidian lectures him not to take duels lightly. After losing the duel, Chris decides to do her own chores from now on, and apologizes to Rex for how she treated him. Later on, Vermeil tries to seduce Alto again, but he says that people should only kiss someone they love, to which Vermeil responds that she loves him. Alto is troubled by this confession and asks Professor Obsidian about human-demon relationships. He replies that demons are destructive creatures that only want humans for mana. Alto confronts Vermeil about this, but she proves herself by kissing him without draining him of any mana. Elsewhere, Professor Obsidian seduces a student named Emma and injects her with some mysterious substance, leaving her frozen in ice. She's rescued some time later, but is left in a coma. The student council is then seen discussing how Emma is the third student to be attacked in this way. Later, the class is assigned to write reports on their familiars, which leads to Alto reluctantly measuring Vermeil's body. Lilia jealously spies on them with the invisibility potion which requires her to remove all her clothes. Alto then accidentally brushes up against a naked Lilia without noticing, leaving her in pure bliss. On his report, Alto lists Vermeil's likes as sweets, but Vermeil adds Alto. Elsewhere, a seemingly possessed Rex and his mutated dinosaur beat up Chris and her dragon. In a flashback, we see that a young Rex summoned his dinosaur as an egg, and Chris helped him hatch it because she believed it was a dragon egg. Back in the present, Vermeil embarrasses Alto by showing affection in public, then Rex's brother arrives to beg them for help. Rex continues to beat up Chris. He can withstand her fire spells and his body starts to mutate. When Alto and Vermeil arrive, Rex says he wants revenge on Alto as well, but the student council president, Elena, arrives and knocks Rex and his dinosaur out cold with her sword destroying their various growths in the process. Afterwards, Chris watches over Rex in the infirmary. Later that day, Vermeil meets with Professor Obsidian and says she knows he's the one attacking students and urges him to stop. But Professor Obsidian suddenly injects her with the same mysterious substance from earlier. This causes her pain and makes her release dark energy. Everyone senses this evil energy and Alina rushes to the scene, but is blocked by a monster that Professor Obsidian had summoned. Alto rushes to the scene as well, and arrives in time to witness Vermeil transform into an uncontrollable monster while Professor Obsidian gloats. While Alina battles Professor Obsidian's monster, which regenerates from each attack, the professor wraps a magic chain around Vermeil's neck to control her. 
The professor then gloats that he was attacking people and injecting them with demon essence to try to turn them into demons, but now he has a real demon. Vermeil suddenly breaks the chain and attacks Obsidian, but Alto shields him and is impaled on her claws. Enraged even further, she attempts to attack Obsidian again, but Alto blocks her once more and begs her not to kill before collapsing in front of her. Vermeil then returns to normal and heals Alto. Professor Obsidian freaks out, saying that demons are not supposed to heal. He then injects himself with his own formula and transforms into a hideous demon before declaring that he will kill them all. But Vermeil effortlessly punches a hole right through him. Frightened by Vermeil's overwhelming power, he panics and tries to fly away. But Chris shoots him down and Vermeil knocks him out. Meanwhile, the monster Alina was fighting retreats. Professor Obsidian is then arrested, while all of his victims wake up from their comas. Later, Vermeil sadly explains to Alto that in order to heal him, she had linked their life forces together, so if one of them dies, the other will die as well. Vermeil then becomes cold to Alto and says that Alto should stay away from her from now on, because her monster form was her true form. But Alto says that he doesn't care and kisses her, leaving her flustered. Be sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments if you want part 2. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Recap Sensei and I hope to see you all again in the next video.